We'll start with Tom. Thanks, Erica. Uh, thanks for taking the time, Ernst. Congrats on this deal. Uh, going official. Uh, I know that that you alluded to this deal took a long time. It was very difficult. Um, I know you won't be able to share everything, but just can you kind of walk us through some of the steps and, and how early it took you, uh, how early it was in conversations until when you finally got the deal signed? Yeah, well, you know, dear to Pennsylvania law, um, it is uh, not possible to contact anybody earlier than the Fiskalpins first day. And uh, even so, we had a conversation with the parents explaining that, uh, I think it was even two years ago, and uh, when we checked the legal situation for the first time, as we knew that uh, Gavin uh, is a target from other clubs uh, regarding his German uh, citizenship, and uh, you know that uh, he could go over to Germany when he's 16, and uh, that's basically what we tried to avoid. Um, and uh, yeah, well, uh, ahead of his 14th uh, birthday, of course, we made the offer. Um, and uh, we got told, hey, listen, uh, there is a lot of rumors going around. And uh, yeah, uh, we basically need to, to see what is going on here. And uh, yeah, finally, we, we took, we needed to go via the league as well, because uh, you all know that. Home ground deals are more or less standardized, and uh, if you do something out of uh, the line and unexpected, yeah, then you wouldn't have an approval from the league. So the first formal offer, which was approved from the league, was just not good enough. And then we did, needed to in intensify this, um, and finally got the highest home ground deal ever, which is uh, basically not the problem for everybody, as we are happy to do it. Um, and uh, it's also a great sign for the commitment of our club to our youth development. Joe Tanzi. Hi, Ernst. Um, in your time scouting young players, where does Kevin, uh, I guess, compare to younger players that you've you've seen throughout your career? And um, in terms of, of a fourteen-year-old signing a a professional contract, and have you seen players this developed uh, at this age before? Yeah, of course, I have seen that. Uh, and to be honest, and I have seen also a, a lot of talents uh, dying in one of the lower uh, amateur leagues in, in Germany, yeah, um, because uh, there was too much of a buzz, and uh, you know, people sometimes uh, <clears throat> cannot handle that and uh, don't continue in their development. But uh, I would say pretty comparable is, and, and the more famous example for that is when when I when I fetched uh, Dominic Schobers like to Salzburg, he was also 14 years of age. Um, basically, when we agreed in a deal, and uh, at that time, I mean, what he showed was also amazing. Um, we could sign him with 16, but we had the pre-agreement uh, with his father and the agency at that time that he's going to join us instead of Arsenal or other English clubs who were in the draw at that time. And uh, that's probably the best uh, yeah, best practice example. I would say Kevin, in my eyes, is uh, certainly amongst the, uh, the top three talents I have seen in, in my 30 year uh, range so far. Jose Nunez. Thank you, Erica. Uh, good morning, Ernst. If you're in the States, I don't know where you are. Um, wanted to ask a little bit. Obviously, you gave a lot of high praise here to Kevin and, and sort of in his skill set and where he is right now. Where do you and the club see uh, him sort of incorporating into the first team, right? Like sort of what's what's the pathway here to get him these first minutes? And obviously, maybe Pennsylvania child uh, uh, work laws get in the way a little bit, too. But we'd love to hear sort of what the what the what the avenue is here for Kevin to uh, get to the first team eventually uh, featuring? Yeah, we are checking this currently, um, but uh, I think we are in a better state here um, and with less restrictions. Uh, but it's also a legal thing because uh, MLS is uh, based in New York and uh, as a firm, as a company, um, they reside in, in Delaware, as you know. So uh, this is probably a bigger question, but uh, we will handle that one. Um, well, you know, we, we never can foresee um, the career of a young player, um, but we definitely have the pathway. 
currently we tried to get him back from a small in overload injury i would say uh, he is supposed to be in training with our team or with the team with the second team probably by next week again and then we you know we try to integrate him as good as possible in the second team and uh, train as well as play him there. And uh, then we need to see how quick he is adjusting to the physical challenges. I mean, he, he already played a little bit and definitely also saw that uh, this is something different than a friendly game. And it's something different than U17 tournament, even an international one, um, by physical standards and, and opposition. So um, that's what uh, we need to see now, how quick he adapts there and gets over the level. And then the next step will certainly be that he trains with the first team. And then we take it from there. So I'm not a seer, but uh, yeah, within hopefully within a, a one or two years range, we can do that, that we get him some MLS minutes. John? Thanks, Erica. Ernst, in your travels, as you mentioned, as we we talked about you've seen a lot of great young talents over the years, but how rare is it to land in a situation where a family becomes such a big part of a club? And in this case, two families, really, the Aronsons and now the Sullivans. Um, that's not necessarily just an economic dynamic or a footballing dynamic. It's something, something different in a way, and I wonder what that means to you. I had that before, as you can imagine, <laughs> quite, a, quite a lot. So I'm used to it, uh, say it like that. And by the way, you forgot the cracks. Uh, we have two of them as well in our, yeah. in our department. Yeah. But uh, uh, that's obviously a, a, a usual and common thing in Philadelphia that soccer is spread amongst families. So, but I'm happy. I'm happy to see. I mean, we're all following the development of Quinn, who is doing an amazing job right now with us. Um, and uh, we expect the same for, for Kevin. And it's always a special thing. I mean, you remember the Aarons and brothers when uh, Brendan always told us that uh, Paxton is the better one and he beats him regularly in his fights at home. So um, these are these are the funny stories about the boys. And that's what I love when they compete uh, and, and try to show who is the better one uh, to everybody. So uh, it, it's it's a special thing. In a way. Any other questions for Ernst? Alrighty then, Ernst, have a great Father's yeah. Day and everyone else hope to see you at noon today. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bogart is uh, signing up. Oh, uh, so sorry, no, I, no, 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 I, I, I was fumbling around looking for the button. My bad, I didn't want to unmute myself. Um, yeah. Nobody's asked it, so go ahead, Ernst. Um, you've seen all the reports about Kevin Sullivan and, and a deal being agreed for Manchester City when he turns 18. Any comment on that? No, there are so many people who are commenting on that uh, that I don't need to do that anymore, so. Thank you. Feel free to feel free to ask your 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 uh, colleagues over in Europe. They write a lot of things. Yeah, um, even the most famous one there, he he knows everything. Uh, but uh, be 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 sure that he he doesn't know it from us. All right. And on that note, any other questions? Great. Thank you so much, Ernst. Hope to see the rest of you at noon today. Welcome. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.